allow us to deal with uncertainties in an easy way. Emmanuel will show will show you three uh, three um, example cases afterwards after my presentation. And uh, at the end of my presentation, I will very quickly uh, talk about the use of PAM Suite here uh, at EDF. So let's start with parametric studies. Uh, a parametric study is a study uh, that involves uh, simulating the same case with multiple sets of values or uh, configurations. I will distinguish four uh, types of parametric study. The first one is uh, the type where you have uh, multiple system configurations. We call that scenario studies. And in this case, the goal uh, of the study is to determine the simulation results for each of the system configurations. As an example, you may have uh, a circuit breaker for which you want to uh, determine the transient uh, recovery voltage for different network configurations. A second type of parametric study is optimization studies. In this case, uh, you have a, a device, a model, and you want to determine the, the model parameters in order to reach given system performances. As an example, you may have a voltage regulator of a generator, and you want to determine the uh, uh, parameter values that lead to the fastest response of this regulator. You'll see one example of this kind uh, with Emmanuel afterwards. Third type of parametric study is what we call data matching or also the, the same thing, uh, parameter de determination from measurements. Here, the goal is to determine the model parameter values that allow you to match uh, given measurements. For example, if you have, uh, you have measured the short circuit behavior of a transformer, of a generator, sorry, then you may want to uh, determine the resistances and inductances of your generator model in EMTP from these measurements. You will see also an example of this kind afterwards with Emmanuel. And the fourth uh, kind uh, of parametric study, and the most important for the presentation today, are the studies with data uncertainties, which we call uh, probabilistic studies. These data uncertainties uh, can come from two uh, sources. They can be due uh, to a limited knowledge of our system and of our system parameter values, then we talk about epistemic uncertainty. The uncertainty can come also from the intrinsic randomness of the physical phenomenon we are trying to study, and then we call that aleatory uncertainty. Anyway, both kinds of uncertainty are treated in the same way, so there is no need to in, remember these names or to really distinguish be, between both kinds. In these kinds of, of parametric studies, uh, the goal, uh, of course, is to determine the potential results, the potential simulation results, given these system uncertainties. As an example, let's consider the case of the energization of a transformer which is uh, illustrated here in this figure on your, uh, on your right. When you energize a transformer, you may be interested in uh, determining the inrush current at the energization and the uh, voltage drop uh, uh, caused by this inrush current. We know uh, from electrotechnical theory uh, that uh, these uh, two uh, variables, in rush current and voltage drop, depend on three, three parameters which are uh, known with uh, a given uncertainty. These three parameters are the circuit breaker closing 
angle over the power frequency period. This is a random uh, parameter. You don't, in general, you don't control the exact time of the closing of the circuit breaker. There is also the transformer residual flux, which is also a random parameter. In general, you don't control, you don't have control over the residual flux. And a third very important parameter is the uh, transformer saturation inductance. Here, this is not a random parameter. This parameter has a, a fixed value, let's say. However, this value is never well known. Uh, for example, if you are using the data coming from the manufacturer, in general, this uh, data for this parameter is given with an accuracy of between 20 and 30%. In this case, what we would like uh, to calculate is not just the Rose current or the voltage drop or the voltage drop for a given a set of parameter values, but the statistical distribution of these two variables for these uh, uncertainties. And uh, we will probably like as well to uh, calculate the probability of exceeding um, given a uh, given uh, critical threshold. For example, in this case, uh, we uh, may like to know what is the probability of exceeding a voltage drop of 5%, which is a value, usually a, a limit value uh, given uh, by requested by, by TSO. So this is the fourth kind of parametric study, probabilistic studies, or uh, studies with uncertainties, which is the most important part today. So now I'm going to um, talk a, a little more about these uncertainties in EMTP studies. And first of all, where uh, do these uncertainties come from in EMTP studies? As I already mentioned, there are two sources of uncertainties. The first one is the limitation of our knowledge. And uh, this uh, usually comes in the form of tolerances or accuracies on the uh, parameter values. For example, um, the IEC standard on generators tells that uh, the subsynchronous uh, synchronous and subsynchronous uh, inductances of the synchronous generators are known at best with 15% accuracy. Another example already mentioned for uh, air core inductance of transformers or saturation inductance, it's the same thing. Uh, this uh, parameter, which is very important for uh, transformer energy studies, this parameter is always known with an uncertain uncertainty between 20 and 30 percent. Another kind of uh, uncertainty of the limited knowledge type is uh, when we don't have any data at all for our uh, model or for one of the parameters of the model. In this case, if we don't have any data, we don't have any other choice than to use typical values that we can find in the literature. However, uh, you can imagine that using typical values means that the uncertainty is uh, really high. Let's say 100, 200%. So this is the first uh, source of uncertainty in EMTP uh, studies, the limitation of uh, our knowledge. The second type of uh, uncertainty uh, the second source of uncertainty is the randomness of the physical phenomena phenomenon, uh, we study. Now here, we, we, here we have a lot of uh, different things, uh, among which the ones I have uh, mentioned here, for example, uh, in lightning uh, studies, uh, the current amplitude can go from zero to 200 kiloamps. Uh, the circuit uh, breaker closing an angle over the power frequency, I have already talked about that, uh, about that uh, as well. Uh, the circuit breaker pole closing span, the, the three phases of a three-phase circuit breaker don't close at the same time. 
and the differences between the three poles are random. The transformer residual flux, I already mentioned as well. And in fault studies, uh, the fault location is also a, a random uh, parameter. You don't control where the fault occurs. And also uh, the fault angle over the power frequency. You, you, you don't have any control uh, over this parameter uh, as well. So these are the two kind, the two sources of uh, uncertainty in MTP studies. So now that we know that we have uncertainties, what do we do we, with them? Well, our first answer would be we just uh, forget about them. But why uh, this is not a good idea? For two reasons. Uh, well, this is not a good idea because it can lead it can lead for, to wrong conclusions for two reasons. First one, for three reasons, sorry. Uh, first one is that when we have parameters with very large uncertainties, as for example, when we use uh, typical values, you can easily imagine that a parameter that is known with 100 or 200 percent uncertainty, it will have an impact on the results. Right? I mean, uh, the value you take in this uncertainty range it's not the same if you take the bottom value or the top value. However, even with uh, parameters that are as associated with moderate uncertainty, as for example, the air core inductance of a transformer, uh, even if this uncertainty is moderate, it's not 100 or 200 percent, it's 20 percent, let's say, <clears throat> but these parameters can have a big impact on the results. So a moderate uh, uncertainty can be uh, of high influence on the results. So here, again, you cannot just ignore this uncertainty. And third case, uh, even when uh, the parameters are very well known, even when the uncertainty is very small, uh, let's say 5%, uh, in some cases, not all the cases, not, not most of the, of the cases, but in some cases, this small uncertainty is still very important because very small variations of these parameters um, lead to very high variations of the results. This is typical of studies dealing with resonances where uh, very small variations of capacitances or inductances change completely, for example, the overvoltage. So we cannot just uh, forget about uncertainties. Uh, we have to deal with them. One classical um, way to deal, with, to deal with uncertainties is to uh, calculate the worst case. You uh, uh, take the values of the parameters uh, that lead to the worst case and you uh, provide this result. But this is not always a good idea for two reasons. The first one is that decisions based on the worst case uh, may be too, uh, rest too restrictive and too expensive. For example, uh, a false probability of 70% is not the same thing as a false probability of 0.0.01%. You, the practical implications and the economic implications won't be the same huh, with these two probabilities. So the, the right way to deal with this problem is to provide the risk and allow the person that uh, is going to make the decision to uh, make this decision according to the risk, to the real risk and not according to a worst case that maybe is uh, has a very small probability. The second reason why uh, calculating the worst case is not always uh, the best idea is that uh, defining the parameter values that lead to this worst case uh, is very usually quite hard. Uh, knowing what are parameter values leading to the worst case is easy when the system response is always increasing or decreasing, as in the first uh, figure on your right. 
However, this is uh, rarely the case in EMTP studies. In general, uh, the system response has many uh, maxima and minima. Uh, and in this case, it is very difficult to know in advance what are the parameter values that are going to lead you to the maxima or the minima. This usually happens when you have resonances, when you have parameter interactions or uh, nonlinear uh, behaviors, which is, in fact, very, very common in, in EMTP studies. So we've, we have seen that we have very often uncertainties in EMTP studies. We have seen <clears throat> that we cannot ignore them. And we, ha we have just seen that uh, uh, calculating the worst case, just calculating the worst case is not always uh, a very good idea. So how then uh, deal with uncertainties in EMTP studies? The right way is to perform a probabilistic study that accounts for uh, real and existing uncertainties. And this means, of course, uh, running a very high number of simulations to explore all this uncertainty domain. By doing so, you will be able to provide stati statistical distributions for the output signals of interest for example, uh, the, the statistical distribution of the inrush current for our transformer energization case or the statistical distribution of, of the voltage drop. You will be able uh, to provide the probability of exceeding uh, critical thresholds, which is uh, usually uh, the most important conclusion of the study. For example, here, the probability of exceeding a voltage drop of 5%. And in some cases, you are also interested in providing sensitivity analysis. Uh, this is uh, a classification of the parameters depending on their influence on the results. Uh, the, the goal here is to determine what are the parameters that influ influence the most of the results. In our example case, uh, of the transformer energization, we can see in this figure on your right at the bottom that the most influential parameter is the closing uh, time of the circuit breaker. Okay, so we have seen what are parametric studies. We have talked uh, more specifically about uncertainties. And now I'm going to talk to about uh, PAM Suite, which is a software that we, we have developed at EDF in the last two years, uh, specifically to deal with this uh, with these problems, uh, to deal with this uh, parametric study. So PAM Suite allows you to perform with MTPRE scenario scan. Uh, data matching or parameter de determination from measurements, optimization studies, probabilistic studies, which is the same thing as uncertainty studies, and uh, sensitivity, sensitivity analysis. So now I'm going to go through uh, two slides with uh, some uh, key features of PAM Suite. Uh, as you will see, in uh, the demonstration by Emmanuel afterwards, it is quite easy to use because everything is visual. You don't need to do any programming. All the information is encapsulated in one single file, your EMTP case, the parameter, the uncertain parameter definitions, the results, the graphs, everything is in one single, in one single file. Uh, PAM Suite has uh, power simulation, uh, powerful simulation result post processing. You have uh, many built in functions that allow you to post process the MTP results. But it uh, allows also uh, to define specific post processing functions if you have a particular need. You don't need to stick to the existing post-processing functions, you can define your own your own ones. Then uh, PAM Suite will run 
hundreds or thousands of simulations for you. And you will see the results of these simulations as the simulations go on. There is, there is an online monitoring of the results. Uh, when you have finished uh, with all the simulations, the, the analysis is very easy as well because everything is visual. You can very easily uh, visualize the results. And you can also um, quite easily identify the cases, I mean the sets of parameter values that lead to the critical to the critical cases. For example, you can very easily determine what are the residual fluxes that lead to the worst voltage drop. It's an example. Um, <clears throat> if I'm parallelizes the the simulations, so uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the time of performing this kind of studies because if you have several cores in your computer, all the cores are used. And if, for example, if you have a six, a six core computer, then there are six MTP simulations running at a time. And the last thing, uh, in general, it's not necessary to go outside of PAM Suite. Everything that is needed is included in this package. But if you want to, you can export the results of PAM Suite to Excel or to MATLAB. So you can do whatever you want in this other software. And this is all for PAM Suite. Now, my last uh, slide about the use of PAM Suite at EDF, as I already said. PAM Suite was developed two years ago, um, and now it is used for more or less 50% of all the EMTP studies we perform here at EDF, maybe maybe even more. In fact. And it is used for a very wide range of studies because uh, uncertainties are everywhere, in fact. Uh, for example, uh, for lining protection, for transformer energization studies, for power resonance studies, for fall protection, transient stability, etc. We have uh, used it for many, many kinds of studies. And uh, I think that's all, yes, for my presentation. You, yes, thank, thanks a lot, uh, Manuel, for your presentation. Um, let me now take the ball back. Hold on a second. Yes. Can you see my screen now, Manuel? Yes, I can. Yes. Excellent. So thank you so much, uh, Manuel, for your nice uh, presentation. Uh, now I'm going to go through some uh, test case using EMTP and uh, PAM suites. So the first one that, that I would like to introduce is about uh, transformer inrush. So as uh, we explained uh, before, the typical objectives when we do a, a transformer uh, inrush study with EMTP are to determine what is the, 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 the maximum inrush current, uh, what is the, the voltage drop that you have at the, the PCC when you energize a, a transformer, uh, uh, of course, the, 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 when um, a transformer is being energized, uh, the current is differential, and uh, you want to make sure it's not the same on all the windings, and you want to make sure that the differential relay will not trip uh, during um, uh, energization. Or you can uh, use MTP to determine if uh, control switching will be required or not to match the requirements, uh, basically, of your system. So, uh, the, the, as Manuel explained, the typical source of uh, uncertainty when we do a, a transformer in rush studies. Um, so, uh, if we look at the upstream network um, before the PCC, the, one of the very uh, 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 important parameters that usually when we see report from client doing a transformer in rush, which is not taking into account, is the steady state voltage. Of course, when you energize a transformer, if, if you energize it when the voltage is at 95% or when it's at 105%, the inrush current won't be the same. So we need to take that into account. 
Um, do you have any contingency on the upstream network? Maybe your line is uh, disconnected for maintenance, and uh, this will, of course, impact the, 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 the inrush currents. If you have any capacitor bank on the upstream network, if they are connected or not, will actually change the frequency response of the upstream network and can change the, 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 the inrush currents. What is the short circuit power of the PCC? Uh, what is the X over R ratio uh, at 60 hertz at the PCC? Because this will impact the, 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 the decay time of the inrush currents. And uh, then about the modeling, uh, do you use a reduced 60 hertz model or do you have a full complete uh, model of the upstream network? Of course, everything here will impact the inrush current and will impact the voltage drop here. Then, of course, the circuit breaker. When you close, the circuit breaker is also a very uh, uh, important parameter. If you close at zero voltage crossing or if you close it at maximum voltage. And what is the pole closing span? As you know, when you close the circuit breaker, the three phases uh, don't close simultaneously. There is a small spread, a few milliseconds. And this can have a very high impact on the transformer inrush. And finally, on the transformer, what is the saturation curve of your transformer? Do you know it? Maybe there is some kind of uncertainty here. What is the ERCOR reactance? It's a very important uh, parameter. And where did you put the ERCOR reactance? Uh, did you, in the, in the model, do you consider the, 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 saturate, the transformer is fully saturated at 110% or maybe at 115, 120%? So this is also uh, this has also a very high impact on the inrush current. Do you have any residual flux on the transformer? Uh, and if yes, oh, it is distributed in the tree uh, uh, in in the magnetic cores. So all of those parameters here are very high. Uh, uh, they have a high impact on the on the simulation results. Um, so uh, the first case study basically we want to determine what is the, the voltage drop that we have at the PCC. Uh, so uh, we set up a case in EMTP and in PAMSUIT where we vary the steady state voltage, we vary the short circuit power, we vary the closing time of the circuit breakers, and we vary the, 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 the we take into account the closing um, pole span of the circuit breaker. And we vary uh, the, the, the residual flux in the transformer. We use uniform and normal distribution to model all the parameters. So uh, this is what PAM Suite looks like. So I will show, you, show, show it to you live in a moment. Uh, the first window of PAM Suite is called the case definition window. Case definition. It's where we will set up the, the parameters and the signals. So the, the parameters are uh, on the left side um, uh, of this window here, and they are user defined. Uh, they can be uh, related to EMTP parameters, of course, uh, so parameters in the EMTP model, or they can just be PAM suite parameters. So here we define the voltage uh, at the PCC, we define the short circuit power, and from the short circuit power, we calculate the parameter of our uh, F9 equivalent at 60 hertz. We vary the, 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 the closing times of the breaker. Here we have the closing time of the three phase, TA, TB, and TC. We use Gaussian law. Uh, to, um, to, to vary them, and we vary the residual flux in the transformer here. So this is all the parameters that we vary that are on the left. And on the right, we have the signals, what we want to look at. Uh, the signals can be of different types. They can be scalar value, like the maximum inrush current. This is a single value calculated for each simulation. For each simulation, it will give me the maximum current that I have on one of the three phases. I can also curve. Uh, for instance, the inrush current waveforms on the three phases, uh, or the, the voltage drop uh, that I have at the PCC. So uh, let me show you exactly. I think this is the one. No, this is not the one. I have too many cases open. Yeah, let's go back. So here I'm in time suite. Let's go back to the to the Yes, to the definition. So this is how PAM Suite looks like. It's uh, actually I don't have to have EMTP open. It's a standalone tool, and here we define all the parameters as I present. If you want to add a parameter, you just click on the Add button. You define the type of distribution that you have, um, and if you want to add a signal, you click on Add. 
and then you have some uh, room to type the expression of the signal you want to evaluate. So it's very easy. Um, yeah. So uh, now if we look at the results, so in time suites, let the results are pre-calculated here. They are here. So this is the 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 the, the other window where we will actually look at the results and where we will run the simulation. So we have different type of cool of curves and uh, and uh, chart. It looks very good. So if your bus uh, uh, come behind you and see your screen, you will be impressed by all the complex stuff that you see uh, uh, that 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 you do uh, using your tool. So it's a it's a good way to get promotion time suites, I believe. So uh, here, what we have here uh, on the upper right um, uh, part, here we have what we call the curve. It's all the curves that has been uh, calculated for each uh, simulation. For instance, I will run the calculation click. Uh, it will run the analysis, and we will see that this will be updated at every uh, at every case. So the simulation is running right now. And I it just created a new uh, set of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of values. On the bottom right uh, corner here, I can plot. So each, I can plot here scalar uh, variables. So they can be parameters or they can be uh, calculated signals. So for instance, here we see on the horizontal axis, we see the maximum current on the three phases. So for instance, here it was approximately 250 amps. And on the vertical axis, I see the voltage drop in per unit. So I can see that the maximum in rush current is about 650 uh, amps, and the maximum voltage drop is about maybe 12 or 13 percent here. And I can see that the, the 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 maximum voltage drop is not when I have the maximum in rush current. Why is that? Because it because actually uh, the, the 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 maximum in rush current are when the short circuit power is very strong and when the voltage is very high. But this will lead to a small voltage drop because the short circuit power is very strong. But when the short circuit power is lower, then the, the inrush current can be low. So the voltage drop can be higher. So using, so if you, so you cannot do a worst case analysis uh, because uh, it won't give you the correct answer. Uh, you have to do a parametric uh, studies like it like this one to get the, 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 the voltage drop. I hope I'm clear. If it's not the case, we'll have some time at the end of the presentation for some questions. Here, we can plot on the bottom left uh, side, we can plot a distribution function. So here I see the, the, the distribution of the, of the inrush current and I can calculate the probability to have a, a, a specific value. And on the upper left corner, I have what we call the convergence graph. It gives me the probability to have a voltage drop in this case higher than than eight percent here, and uh, I can use um, some estimation to, to 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 give me an interval of confidence. So, for instance, here I see that the probability to have a voltage drop higher than eight percent is somewhere between two point five percent and three point five percent. Approximately. Uh, so if I go back to the slide here, uh, I simulated 4,000 cases, and on uh, my computer it took the approximately 40 minutes. So uh, it's not that long when you consider the amount of uh, simulation that has been uh, that has been done. Uh, the highest voltage drop are not necessarily due to high inrush current, uh, and the other conclusion is. Uh, the probability to have a voltage drop at the PCC greater than 10% is 0.4%. So uh, this is a typical case of uh, transformer in rush analysis performed with EMTP uh, using time suites. So the second case study that I, I would like to introduce is uh, lightning over voltage. Um, so uh, typical objectives of lightning over voltage study are first to study uh, the, the over voltage it's themselves to get the values of the of the over voltage that you can have when a lightning strike hit a sky wire or when hit a phase conductor and of course this is to perform most of the time insulation coordination to determine what is the the, the required bil uh, of your equipment this can be used also uh, to uh, study surge arresters to size 
uh, search arresters. So what are the typical sources of uncertainty uh, when doing a lightning over voltage study? Of course, there is the lightning strike itself. Uh, what is the intensity of the current? What is the rise time of the lightning strike current? Where it is located? This is, of course, very important. Then on the transmission line, uh, what is the grounding resistance of your line? Uh, do you have soil uh, ionization? What is the soil resistance? These are parameters that have a very high impact on uh, lightning um, uh, over voltages. Then the power frequency phase angle. This is most of the time skipped uh, by, uh, by, uh, by um, uh, uh, engineers doing a lighting over voltage study, but it's actually a very important parameter. The probability to have a flashover is not the same when uh, the, the, the lightning strike hit when the voltage is zero on one phase or when it's at uh, uh, the maximum voltage. Uh, if you want to study the over voltage inside a GIS or an AIS, uh, you have to take into account all the stray capacitance. Uh, and this is, you have a very high tolerance on those values. Maybe the lengths and the dimensions on the, 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 the substation are not known. And uh, in this case here, uh, by the way, there is a transmission line hit by a lightning. Then we have a gas insulated substation. And the gas insulated substation is connected to uh, a power plant where we have a generator step up transformer and we have a power generator. And we want to study the over voltage propagation from the high voltage transmission lines to the generator. So uh, the case that we set up using uh, PAM suite and the EMTP is the following. We vary the lightning strike intensity, the rise time, the phase angle of the power frequency source, and the grounding resistance, and the GIS lamp using PAM suite. Uh, so the parameter definition is the following. Uh, on the left, we uh, vary the voltage, we vary the length in the GIS, we vary the resistance um, uh, of the, 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 the transmission line tower, and we vary the lightning uh, currents according to a SIGRE uh, parameter distribution. And what PAMSUIT will do is for every set of parameters, it will run a calculation. And for every calculation, it will calculate uh, it will recall the lightning current and it will calculate the over voltage that we have at, on different nodes here. So uh, let me show you, let me, uh, uh, let me show you, oops, sorry, the case in PAM suite, this is this one, yes. So I can run actually uh, the case here. So now uh, the simulation is, uh, is uh, performed. On the upper right corner here, we see the, the, the last uh, of voltage that we had on the generator side here. And on the bottom right, we see again a 3D graph where we plot the over voltage on the generator, we plot an over voltage on the transformer, and we plot the lightning uh, current here. And we can calculate the probability to have a nova voltage on the generator higher than the BIL. This is very good when you do uh, insulation co coordination, uh, uh, basically. Um, if I go back to my slides now, let me stop this, yes. If I go back to the slides now, here we see what we call a cobweb plot. I, I don't know uh, if you're familiar with it, and I will try to explain what it means. So, uh, in the cobweb plot, uh, the x axis here, on the x axis here, we have parameters. So, for instance, uh, we have the over voltage that we had on the transformers, we have the maximum uh, lightning current, we have the front time of the, uh, the lightning strike, and we have the steepness of the lightning strike. And on the vertical axis, we have the ranks. That means that on the bottom we have lower values and on the top we have higher values. So, and each line that we see represents one simulation. So, for instance, if I uh, take one orange line, 
I see, if I take the top line, I see that on this case, the overvoltage on the transformer was very high. The current, uh, the lightning current was also very high. And the, the, the front time of the lightning was relatively high. And the steepness was also relatively small. Sorry, and the steepness of the lightning was, is relatively high here. So this is a, a nice way to see the, 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 the impact of all the parameters. And here we colored in orange all the cases where the overvoltage on the transformer are higher than a specific value, usually maybe the BIL or 80% of the BIL of the transformer. So what do we see here? What can we conclude from here? Is we see that uh, the overvoltage on the transformers are basically function of the, 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 the lightning current. To have a very high overvoltage, you need to have a high uh, lightning uh, current. You have you have to, to have a small uh, front time of the of the lightning strike, and you you need to have a high uh, steepness. So the the overvoltage on the transformer is uh, basically a simple function of the lightning parameters. In other words, uh, you can you can perform a, a worst case analysis if you're just interested in the overvoltage on the transformer. You take the maximum lightning current, you take the worst uh, front time and 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 the worst steepness, and it will give you the maximum uh, overvoltage on the transformer. But then I'm looking at the overvoltage on the generator after uh, the transformer. And here things are completely different. I see that the overvoltage on the generator are not function on all the parameters. Uh, they are distributed uh, uh, completely. Uh, um, it's not random, but uh, it looks like it's random. Uh, the, if I take a one line, I can see that you can, the worst case might be a, uh, an average lightning current and maybe an average front uh, time and maybe an average steepness. So in other words, the, the, the overvoltage on the generator is a complex function of the uh, lightning parameters. And you cannot do a worst case analysis if you're interested in studying that. Uh, and you need to do a parametric analysis and you need to study a lot of different cases to be sure to evaluate the overvoltage, worst overvoltage correctly, and to estimate the probability to to, um, to, 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 to have an overvoltage higher than the BIL correctly. So this is where, and this is why uh, PAM suite uh, is uh, really important here. Uh, the last case uh, that, I, that I would like to introduce is a little bit different, is uh, about uh, optimization and uh, uh, parameter determination. Uh, it's very frequent when we do uh, EMTP studies that uh, some uh, some model parameters are unknown, but we have some uh, uh, reference, maybe some measurements from 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 lab, and we want to calculate the model parameter so our model match some measurements. So uh, this is a, a typical example where uh, we have a 175 MVA uh, generator uh, being tested. Uh, the exciters and the governors are modeled with the standard um, uh, exciters and, and governors from, uh, from IEEE. But the exciters parameters are known. Maybe the, 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 the exciters is 20, 30 years old and the documentation is lost and the parameters of the exciters are known, and you need to have an EMTP model, uh, which is good uh, to, 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 uh, to for your study. So uh, a load shading event uh, when the loads uh, connected to the generator vary has been measured, and you have the frequency and you have the voltage uh, waveforms that have been measured. And PAM suite can be used to determine what is the best set of parameters to match the, the, the measurement. So uh, if I go back to PAM suite very quickly here, um, uh, we have the, 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 the EMTP model, which is linked to uh, PAM suite. And we set different parameters using uh, what we call an optimized distribution here. That's why they are in green. And we set also some signals. And one of the signals is actually the distance. Uh, between uh, the measurements and the simulated uh, model. We define the optimization parameters where we set that we want basically that the, the difference between the, 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 the measurement and 
the EMTP simulation is equal to zero. We have the best possible match, and then we run the analysis. If I do that, I'm sure to start to run the analysis. And uh, if we wait for maybe, I think it takes 15 minutes on my computer, I'm sure it will give you uh, the optimized value. In this case, I have already four parameters. It's a four parameters optimization, so it's something a little bit uh, tough to calculate. And we can see that then if we put the, those parameters in the EMTP model, we have very good match between the model and the um, uh, measurements. So, uh, so this is another uh, uh, nice thing about, about this tool. So uh, it's time now to, to, to conclude. Uh, um, in practical EMTP studies, uh, data uh, uncertainty is uh, frequent. Um, uncertainty can be due to the randomness of the physical phenomenon, phenomenon uh, lightning strike, parent amplitude, transformer, uh, residual flux, uh, circuit breaker, uh, pole closing span, or false location. Or it can also be due to the limited knowledge or the lack of data uh, of the parameters, like the transformer, FR reactance, or the generator reactance, as um, Manuel explained. So PAMSUITE is an add-on model for EMTP dedicated to parametric studies. Uh, you can import any uh, EMTP design in PAMSUITE, and you can perform uh, different type of studies, uh, Monte Carlo analysis, sensitivity analysis, contingency, scenario exploration, optimization, and data matching. Of course, we didn't have time to cover everything here. It was just a, a quick introduction. So PAMSUITE is not problem specific and can be used to basically all the EMTP uh, analysis. You can use it to determine the model parameters, uh, to perform lightning and switching transients, as we saw, uh, transformer energization studies, use it to, to, to optimize a passive filter design, um, to, to, to optimize the, the, the control, your control system, uh, or to determine an equivalent impedance locus when, we, when you do a interconnection studies. Uh, this tool is developed and used intensively by EDF, the French National Utility, uh, for a large scope of uh, pra practical studies. Um, if you are uh, interested or if you have any question uh, or if you want a demo of the tool, feel free to contact us. We'll be pleased to, to give you more uh, information. Uh, before we uh, we uh, go to the, to the question and, uh, and answers time, uh, I would like to, to make some advertisement about uh, the next events uh, that we organize related to, to, to EMTP. Uh, we have a nice uh, training next week in Seattle in the US. Uh, and uh, we do have uh, also some uh, some events in India and um, and another training uh, in November in Orlando in Florida in uh, in the US. So if you want to uh, to uh, meet us, uh, feel free to to register to one of this um, one of these events. There is also a, a five days training uh, organized by RTE, the French TSO, in Lyon uh, in France um, um, at the end of November. And if you want any information on all of these events or on anything else related to MTP, feel free to, 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 to visit our website. So uh, I would like to thank you, uh, Manuel, for your presentation and to all of you to attend, uh, uh, to be here and to... to, 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 to. And uh, now it's time for question and answers. So uh, I hope uh, what we explained is uh, clear, uh, was clear enough. If it's not the case, uh, feel free to, 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 to contact us. You have my email here, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'll be, I will be pleased to, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, try to answer to you. So we have some, some questions. So the first question is, um, uh, uh, if the slides and if this presentation will be available, uh, we'll put it on uh, YouTube, uh, so um, so the presentation will be available in YouTube in the next uh, in the next few days, I guess. Uh, the only problem is I forgot to uh, record the beginning of the presentation, so uh, so you will uh, um, uh, you will uh, we will skip the the, the, the introduction to ENTP basically. Uh, then we have a question from from Julio. Uh, can you show me uh, 
what can I do in the MTP to send the file parameters and signals to PAM Suite? Yes, sure. So the question is, uh, so the first question is how to basically import an EMTP model in uh, from PAM Suite. So what you do is uh, you basically save it, and in PAM Suite it's very easy. Uh, let me open the correct file. Oh, let's stop it. Oui. So now we have the, the, the analysis which is still uh, performing. So and in PAM Suite, ah, sorry about that. Let's go here. So um, you simply go to define case and you will click on import EMTP by base case. And then you will select the ECF. And when you do that, then if you go to parameters, any parameters, and you add, for instance, a uniform distribution, you can link it to a corresponding, uh, to, you can link it, sorry, to any MTP parameters. For instance, in this case, I have all the devices and I can, uh, and I can uh, connect to the parameters. In some case, um, not all the case, but in some case, there is a small syntax to put in the MTP, but uh, it's uh, to, to set up the parameters, but it's, uh, it's documented. So uh, I hope I have answered the, the, your question. Um, the second question is, I'm sorry. Um, how do you set the parameters of the probability function for case like in rush current analysis and lightning? Okay, very good question. So uh, if I go back to the case, of lightning in of inrush it's it's no this is lightning sorry the case about the inrush it is the, this one so it's very easy uh, if you want to add parameters you click on add and for instance uh, you can define a, a uniform parameter you give it a name so let's call that param1 uh, you, if you want you can uh, sorry about that you can um, define a minimum value and a maximum value and uh, at each simulation, in the case of a uniform distribution, it will take one value between the two, uh, the, the, the two extrema. And if you want, you can link it to uh, uh, an EMTP parameters here. So it's how you can link Pamsit parameters to uh, EMTP parameters. I hope I have answered to your question. The other question is, how much flux to consider in each of core of a tree winding transformer for the worst case? Um, so this is related to transformer in rush. Uh, Manuel, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, I can answer this, okay. this question. Go ahead. It, it's a good question because it shows the, the need for this kind of analysis. In fact, there is, you can, cannot say in advance what is the worst what is the value of the residual flux that will lead to the worst uh, to the worst case in fact uh, the worst case depends on the residual flux but also on the circuit breaker closing time and they uh, these two parameters so they have interaction so you cannot just say the, the put that uh, value of the residual flux and you will get the worst case that doesn't work that's a, a good uh, example to show that you ca working with the worst case is a bad idea. You, you, in fact, you, wo you will never find the worst case. So um, thank you, uh, Manuel, uh, for your, your, your clear answer. Uh, next question is, uh, statistical analysis in EMTP seems to do the same studies. Is that correct? What is the difference? It's actually a very good question. And uh, you know, uh, in the MTP, you have the, pro you have the possibility to do what we call a statistical analysis. If you go in the options library, there's a statistical option and you can set up here some, uh, some statistical uh, parameters. The main difference is the only parameter that you can vary when you do statistical uh, analysis is the uh, breaker closing time and the breaker opening time. You cannot vary all the parameters with the statistical analysis. Uh, you cannot perform uh, uh, optimization. You cannot uh, define 
uh, your pre and your post processing. So, so PAM suites and what we've shown today is way more, uh, uh, I would say, advanced that, than the statistical analysis here. I hope I have answered to the question, Mernad. Um, the next question is, what probability function do you use to model the uncertainties in PAM suite? Can you select a specific probability function? Uh, do you want to answer this one, uh, uh, Manuel? Uh, yes. Uh, in PAM suite, there are several um, statistical functions. You have uniform, uh, Gaussian distribution, log normal distribution, discrete distribution, Maybe Emmanuel, you can show yes. the menu where you choose the distribution. Here, so you can see you have Gaussian, triangular, log normal, uniform, and two different kinds of discrete uniform distribution. So in principle, with all these distributions, you can do whatever you want. You, but if a user needs another specific uh, Probability distribution. This can be added to PAP Suite quite quite easily. Thank you, uh, Manuel. Um, any other question? Uh, yes, we have one question from uh, Julio. Uh, in which place I determine the range of variation of the variable we evaluate in PAP Suite? So yes, uh, for instance, if I take a Gaussian uh, distribution here, here I will set up the mean and the standard deviation. If I set, if I select a uniform distribution as shown uh, before, here you select a minimum value and a maximum value here. So it's very, very simple. Um, we had the request to uh, send the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I don't think we'll send the PowerPoint presentation, but we will put the video on YouTube. But if you really want the PowerPoint presentation, no problem. Just send me an email, and I will, and I will uh, send it to you. Is there um, any other questions? So I think we're good. Uh, We'd like to thank you all uh, to have attended this meeting. Uh, of course, feel free to contact us to, uh, to, to, if, you have, uh, if uh, you have any question. It was a pleasure to show you EMTP and to, uh, show you, uh, to show you PAM Suite. We have another question, which is, uh, uh, how much is the price of PAM Suite? Uh -huh. uh, the good thing with my job is uh, I don't have to deal with the price and with sales. So uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, just send me an email and I, I can put you in contact with the, with the, 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 the right person. Um, so uh, yes, again, uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, um, have fun with uh, EMTP and uh, we'll hope to see you soon uh, in one of our events or in one of the next uh, webinars. Have a good day. Have a good, uh, have a good evening. Bye.